What time is that? It goes from noon to six. Okay, I have to, I will check and let you know because I'm trying to schedule my sister's or my niece and nephew's pictures. Okay, that's fine. So, but I'll let you know. That's I'll fine. put tentative and I will give you a heads up. So, but I want you to know this line quit, tentative, and I'll Sounds pretty good. Yeah. The microphone's also. No feedback, no echo. Any volumes, I mean, not that good. Is there echo? Cool. Cool beans. Echo. Echo, echo. Well, now there's an echo because she's saying echo. Echo, echo. I think. Carly Rinda from CCTI is out there. I was trying to figure out how to get in. Oh. <laughs> this is a door. Oh, it's and funny. She's like, oh, oh this is this is the door. You want to <laughs> <She's like, "Nice laughs> see me? I'm like, yeah. I've been doing a lot with her at CCTI right now. Yeah. <laughs> Over here. Yeah. Sometimes I push instead of pull. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's because I'm not ready. Yeah. I walked into doors thinking it's a push, and it's not. And then I find out very quickly it's not a push. So you're doing well. Your trip was good. Trip was good. It was exhausting. I'm never leaving for two weeks again. <laughs> And I'm never going back to the Middle East, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad we did it. <coughs> um, but I'm also glad it's over. Because that was rough. Um, the food is not my kind of food. Well, that would be the hardest. I think at one you go to any country, though. But see, the most part, like, I, even when I was in Guatemala, like, but see, the most part, like, I can annihilate beans and cheese. Like, you can hit me with that any time. But they literally, everything from the rice to the chicken to the vegetables, they just like cover in saffron. Mm. Like I can't, and they fed you the same thing every time, every time. So like every meal was rice and chicken and mystery beef stuff and mystery lamb stuff. They don't eat pork over there because they're Muslim. Mm. I didn't so, think about the lamb. Don't even really try to shoot the fuses to eat one. Yeah, it was, it was, the food it was rough. Um, it was very, very warm there. I shouldn't say that. Jordan was not hot, but Egypt was very warm. Um, unless you were at like one of the archaeological sites, it's just covered in trash everywhere. Like, it's so dirty there. Um, the hardest thing I emotionally dealt with was the animal situation. I could tell. That was wrong. <laughs> and it tell. wasn't even just the dogs and the stray cats. Like, their horses and their donkeys. Like, they can barely, the people can barely afford to feed themselves, let alone like they're working these animals to the bone and they're not giving them proper like medical care they're not feeding them appropriately i mean the one horse that i saw and th this was like they were having carriages pull like tourist people right and they were all lined up where people got off like the ships like the nile cruise ships waiting to like take you someplace right and the one horse I saw was like clearly trying not to put weight on the leg. And as soon as people got on it and the guy said go, you could just tell this horse was like, and like did it. And like I bawled. Like I'm not even kidding you. Like I cried every day at some point because of the animal situation there. And like I understand like other countries and other whatever, they, they don't view animals the same way we do here. But at the same time, like it, That's hard. it was hard. It was hard emotionally for me to watch that. Christian, I thought she was gonna. You were gonna end up with like two more dogs, <laughs> cats, you know, like suitcase. <laughs> the puppy that I was holding, the little puppy in Petra. When I sent that to him, now granted, I was already gone from there. He was like, he was like, you should bring it home. And I 
was like, I wish I could. But he, he would have 100% let me bring that puppy home if I could have. Why do you even go out to something like that? I don't know. I'm sure they... Uh, a lot of custom paperwork. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he, that needs all kinds of vaccinations and testing and whatever. I mean, I'm sure it's possible if you really wanted to do it. But I'm sure it costs a lot of money. But... The thing is, like, I, I could have filled five planes of animals that I wanted to bring out, 100%. But that puppy was hard. Because the thing is, like, I held the puppy, and the puppy just, like, melted into me. Like, and I was like, ugh. It's so hard to put that puppy down. It's so hard. probably wouldn't have been able to hold them. Yeah. You went up and talked to them, but I don't think it could have gotten... Yeah. Yeah, there was um, a couple dogs like that. I mean, I fed every dog that I could and gave water. Like, uh, they gave us bottles of water, like you would believe. Like, every time we turned around, someone was handing us oh, a bottle good. of water, which is good. But, like, I can only drink so much water. So I was just giving the water to the dog all the time. Like, but yeah, that was the animal situation. Sorry. So, yeah. We got two minutes and then we'll serve. We'll wait for a couple more people to come. But yeah, like I said, I don't, it's not that I don't appreciate the opportunity I had and the experiences I had because I certainly did, but I would never do it again. I would never go back to the Middle East. It's one of those things that, you, that's what you, I ran into your dad last week. Yeah. And that's oh, what he yeah. kind of said. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that was the most I've ever talked to your dad. He was so excited about his trip. Yeah. Was that, I was leaving giant, he was calling the other giant. Yeah. Yeah. And stuff is cool. It was cool. And it, it blows your mind when you're there looking at it. No. But. It was definitely a once and done. And I can't, I, I can't leave for two weeks again. We're going to be It's hard to be away from all the disease. You know, I think even in the best of circumstances, oh, I FaceTime him every night. Yeah, he would have been with you. I think that would have helped a lot. Maybe. It was hard. The dogs and it was hard. Yeah. Yeah. Sean stay in front of house. Are we good? No, no, you're, you're okay. I just need to tweet, small, small tweet then. Oh. I don't know. All right. It's 7 o'clock. We'll get started here. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Colossal Community Podcast. I am Keith, your host, and I'm joined by, seriously, my co-host. She's what back. Up? I am back. And yeah, we're broadcasting live from the Hoffman Mill in Weissport, PA. And tonight we are talking with Bammy. She's going to be telling us about the Lee Heighton Hometown Vintage Christmas event. The second half hour, we will have two students from the CCTI telling us about an awareness project they were working on. Plus, we have lots of events coming up in the area. Two contests that Colossal Radio was putting on, and you can see here in the background here an event coming up this weekend so uh welcome baby thanks thank you so tell us about the hometown christmas hometown vintage christmas um this will be your second year doing this um the downtown initiative is taking this over and um it will be on december 9th from noon to six uh we have 71 vendors so far. Wow. And I still have people reaching out to me. Whether or not they'll, you know, join, I don't know. Right. Um, but it'll be a great time to do Christmas shopping, to visit the local businesses on First Street and, and on Second Street, actually. Um, but we'll have the vendors strategically placed so that you can visit a couple vendors and maybe go into one of the shops in one of the businesses. Um, so it'll be really a great time. It was, it was a success last year. Last year was was huge, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and just the feel downtown last year 
was very positive and Christmassy, Christmassy. and it, it was neat. I, I really enjoyed last year for sure, and I think a lot of other people did too. I, yeah, I think so. I think so. So it, it'll be really great this year. We're doing a couple different things, I guess you would say. Yeah, the same, but a little bit different. Um, one thing is, is we do have a drummer, and he is going to march Father Christmas up to Wine and More, okay. where he'll be um, greeting the children. Uh, but then all the children that are there can actually go up to the street with him. Um, hopefully dressed in their uh, snowing and little lords of the forest <laughs> outfits. Um, so, you know, the uh, gals up, you yeah. know, <laughs> things like that. Um, it'll, it'll just be a, a really great time. Um, we're going to have some games for the children. Uh, or the adults, I guess, you can say. So we are, we're working on some of those. And, um, of course, live music. Okay. Still, I had somebody pencil on me, so if anybody knows of somebody, I really could use it. It's, it's the warmest shift of the day. It's going to be from 2 to 4 right in the middle, um, so I am looking for somebody to do uh, some live music okay. that day. So, yeah. right. um, are the carriage rides back? Yeah. It's in, kind of maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to say yes, I don't want to say no. <laughs> um, we have, uh, we were working with somebody new and um, they're maybe a little concerned about the, the, the hills in the heights of the horses okay. and the, the carriage, so. Fair. Okay, yeah. But um, we're hoping that it comes through. I'm trying to figure out an alternative area, so we're kind of working on that. Yeah. And you are closing the whole part of First Street, right? Uh, First Street will be closed from North Street down to Iron Street. And where can people park? People can park down the rural parking lot off of Sergeant Stanley Huffman Boulevard. Uh, they'll be able to park behind, um, I was going to say the bank, <laughs> <laughs> between First and Second Street, there's a rural park, parking lot there. Of course, anywhere on the streets. Um, I do want to talk to Jerry. Maybe he can use the outdoor center, uh, the trail, the welfare office will be there. Okay. So. Yeah, last year, I mean, we did the same thing. We shut down the Shrubby Den. There's people park. They found places to park. Yeah, they found places to park. A lot of people, like, right in town, they actually walked. Yeah. Right. You know, but we were getting a really great response for people who are interested. Uh, I think people kind of wait to the last minute because of weather. Right, right? yeah. Because it is an outdoor event. Right. Uh, it, it's going to be great. And this is rain or shine, correct? Right? It is rain or shine, yes. Uh, how about snow or shine? Snow or shine. Snow or shine. Right. You know, you get a little bit of snow. A little bit of snow wouldn't hurt. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. 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 So can people get their picture taken with Santa? Um, if they, they can take their own picture with okay. Santa. Yeah, we didn't get a photographer. I reached out to a couple people, but they were kind of booked. Um, so, and I think a lot of people in today's economy, if you know, that's okay. They can take their picture right. with their phones. Right. Yeah. yeah, so it's Father Christmas, right? So Father it's a different getup than the typical Santa getup. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. So it's a little bit more unique and special Correct. than just a Santa picture. Correct. Right? Yes, definitely. Um, he'll have a nice robe on, Christmas robe. Um, it's it's going to be really nice. I always say, think of Hallmark, a Hallmark movie at Christmas time. Right. You know, walking through the street, uh, there'll be a lot of decorations. Uh, Robbie's balloons and more. I'm going to be meeting with him tomorrow to finalize some things. He does incredible work. He is yeah, incredible. Yeah. Right, right. Um, of course, it's outside, so we're going to have to figure out his balloons are light. I don't want them blowing <laughs> all right. over creation. We'll have the heaters again. Um, um, they are up. Uh, the reality yeah, I always say that wrong. I'm yeah. so sorry. It's okay. All these years and I still say it wrong. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, sponsored our heaters last year and uh, open up lamping. Yeah. So we'll have those set up again. Um, not sure if we're going to get the Christmas trees because that was a little bit. That's chaotic. Uh, that was chaotic, yes. Yeah, and then we didn't really have anything to do with them after it was over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, you know, maybe, maybe we'll get one. So we're working on some different, some different decorations. Yeah. 
So what made you come up with the idea of the Ditch Hotel person? Oh my gosh, for years. Um, the LDI, we talked about doing something at Christmas. Uh, last year when we were with the, um, the LDP, um, Leanne was on there. Oh, I don't know, I don't know, it just kind of happened. Yeah, we were figuring out what to do with, we wanted an event for that quarter. Right. Yes. And uh, we had thrown around a couple of ideas from a Christmas parade to an event like to get people downtown. Right. And um, we just kind of ran with this, and it it, it, worked. it worked. And I'll tell you what, we did a lot of events that maybe didn't so much work, and when this one did. It, you felt we felt really good after. We felt good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you and I were grinning from ear to ear. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a great yeah. day. It really was, yeah. and we had a lot of good feedback. Yeah, after exactly. it. So um, we just as sponsors, I'd like to mention. Sure. Um, if you have anybody here? Um, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Iron Valley Real Estate Northeast. Um, Kristen's a, a really good sponsor of ours, as well as Home Comfort Solutions. Lou and Aaron support the Lehigh Downtown Initiative tremendously. Um, the Orioles, another uh, sponsor. The Height Ford, Blue Ridge Communications, Ellen Williams um, Printing, he's our, our print sponsor. Um, of course, Leanne with the, the, um, the heaters. I'm hoping it went big. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. So just as I said, just remember those heaters are going to be all throughout the street. So even if it's chilly out, you can gather around one and warm up for a hot minute, literally a hot minute. Hot minute. Okay. And uh, so there are ways to beat the cold. You can say beat the heat, but beat the cold. <laughs> beat the cold. Yeah. Layer, layer, layer. Very yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. That's and it might not be that cold actually. It's supposed to be in the forties as yeah. of now. Sunny right. and in the forties. Yeah. So I always say, when the sun's shining, it's beautiful out. Right. Um, it really is. Uh, but our musicians are going to be great. We're going to have some picnic tables down there so people can sit around and listen to them if they want, or bring their own chairs. We'll have an area if they want to sit and listen. Uh, we will have a coffee truck, uh, hot chocolate, things like that. So. And what bands are playing? <laughs> um, it's, it's usually it's acoustic music. Okay. Um, we have Autumn Falls Entertainment playing from noon to two, and then Eric Stimler from The Left Edge from four to six, so. Yeah. And Cindy and Eric, everybody raves about them. They're yes. incredible. They are incredible. Um, became very, very good friends with them, so yeah. yeah, over the years. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and the food downtown, you cannot beat. I mean, Matera's outdoes themselves all the time. The food that they have available at Blended is always yeah. Not Blended Bar will be open. Atiras um, will be open. Uh, of course, we have Alfie's. Alfie's for pizza. Grab a quick slice of pizza or hoagie. Uh, Joker's has good food. Joker's has good, really good toasted cheese sandwiches yeah. to die for. And then you got Bonnie and Clyde's. Clyde's. If you really want to sit down and have a great meal, yeah, right. you can't really beat the food downtown. No. So, and that's what we're really promoting is for people to go in and get their food from, from these businesses. Right. So, um, we don't have a lot of food trucks because of that. Right. You know, as we grow, you know, so possibly we can see that they can't handle it on their yeah. own. Maybe we'll pull something different in that right. they don't have. But right now, I want them to get that that business. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, Dale Ott will be there. Dale Ott is from Lee Height. Odds concessions. Mm -hmm. uh, you will have funnel cakes and things like that. Yeah, and some sweet so, treats. Yeah. yeah, we will have two wineries there for wine tasting, and um, a distillery. Okay, it's supposed to be coming for tastings. Yeah, wine and booze. Cool. Yeah, that's Just tasting. That's another good way to beat the cold. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Both of them have some really good winter. Wines and oh, I bet it. Winter time is yeah. time for hot old yeah. wine. Yeah. So. And you know, hey, who doesn't want to take a bottle of wine home or, you know, a bottle of a whiskey or something home with uh, for the holidays? Right. Yeah. Right. right. Or for gifts. Yeah, or for gifts, yeah. Right. And it, it's really a great time to, to purchase Christmas gifts oh, for yeah. people. 
It really is. Everybody did so well last year. Yeah. Now we have some new stores too right. yeah. that will be open. Right. Um, the bookstore is open. Um, one more chapter. She'll be open. Um, Robbie's. I'm sorry. What? Robbie's. Robbie's. Yep. Yeah, Robbie's will be there. Breeze Boutique will be. She'll be open. Mm -hmm. um, Violet Venus, and she'll be doing tattoos. Yeah. To a certain point, I'm not yeah. sure how long. Yeah, have Within Harmony that has a lot of good. Within stuff Harmony has there. some great gifts. Right. Really great gifts from you know crystals to just about anything you can think of, really. Right. Yeah. And what kind of vendors will be there? All kinds of craft vendors. Yeah. Craft vendors. We've got, um, you know, from dog treats to. Well, does the Welsh tea come? The Welsh tea. Oh, oh my gosh, cookies. their cookies yes. are like. Ah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We, and we try, we try, try not to duplicate anything that any of the businesses downtown have. Right. So, yeah, it's a, kind of a chore itself. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Yeah. So. And when is this event again? It is December 9th from noon to six. Yeah. So, to see everybody there come out, and then. As it gets dark, the Christmas trees in the park, you can walk, actually walk through the Christmas trees in the park. Okay. Yeah, because they'll be lit. They'll yeah. be lit. Well, they're lit the whole time, but you can really see them at night. You know, like from 4.30 on. Right. Yeah. So you can make it a whole day event if you wanted to. Right. And they got new lights on the fountain as well. I mean, they did, <laughs> yeah. yes. They were finally fixed, so. I don't know. See if they'll keep those up then the whole all through the winter. Right. <laughs> After Christmas. Yeah. So Jane, if you're listening, I'm coming coming to see you. <laughs> <laughs> you probably shouldn't have warned him about that. <laughs> so what else do you have planned for the rest of the years at the last event? Um we have the Christmas decorating contest for the businesses. Um there each of the businesses have a flyer with a QR code and I will be posting that on Facebook probably this yeah, this week because it'll start on Sunday. Oh my goodness, it'll start on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really will. It'll go live on Sunday through SurveyMonkey. Um, we'll have some of the businesses listed that we know have decorations up, and if somebody sees someone, they can actually nominate somebody else. Okay. And as I see that, I'll add it to the, the list. So it's all um, three winners down in the downtown area, which encompasses Stanley Huffman Boulevard, First Street, and Second Street, and then um, three other winners throughout the borough. This is just for businesses. Okay. There will be a separate one that the borough does for um, residents. Sure. What if people don't have a cell phone to scan? How can they? We've been really doing it with the with the, with the smartphones. Um, we tried the one year to do it, you know, with paper ballots too, and really, nobody really took of it. Right. So, I think most people have a smartphone, or somebody in their family does anymore. It's very simple to do. Well, actually, where I work, there's three guys that have flip phones. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I should say that my husband has one too, but, <laughs> but he also has a smartphone too. Yeah. Well, is there, is there like a link? That like you'll have on Facebook that if people wanted to go they on can the and do it on their computer, then yeah, so yeah. use that too. Yeah, I mean if you have a smartphone, you probably use it on the computer. Right. Yeah. yeah, you know, somewhere under that rock you're living. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. So there, there will be a link. So that's really what we have coming up for this year. Next year, uh, we're looking at doing some meals again. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, pub crawl. Yeah. And of course, wine on the river, which right. is our big signature event. Mm -hmm. Farmers market. Um, yeah. Is that going through the winter again? Um, no, it is not this year. Uh, but Bad Farm is taking orders, and then they come the second and fourth Saturday of the month, and from nine to nine to ten down at Lehigh Outdoor Center okay. and their parking lot, and then they'll be there for two weeks. So at least you can get your beef, you can get your dairy products, things like that. And they do have some pre-made things too. Right. Mm -hmm. Cheese. 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 Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. Dude, their chocolate milk is off the charts. 
You do know that they got the recipe from Hans. 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 Yeah. 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 Right. Anything else you want to cover about the vintage Christmas? Um, just come out, have a good time. Um, there's going to be different things going on throughout the day. So stay the whole day, come out for different parts of the day, go home for a while, come back again. Yeah. And if somebody wants to help out with any event, it's not going to Oh, please contact me. You can always use volunteers. <laughs> That's a loaded question. Yeah. But no, they can, they can contact me, um, email me at ldileighton at gmail.com, or they can call me um, on the Facebook page, message me, however. But um, yeah, we're excited to be doing this. Um, as far as the LDI goes, uh, as we've been reorganizing it, we are going to be doing a lot more revitalization, but also throughout the whole community and not, so if something, if something comes up and is needed, we're going to be working with everybody. Okay. You know. And you're involved in it as well, right? Intermittently, yeah. Intermittently, yeah. yeah. Intermittently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's very busy right now. But right, right. I have a lot going on, so I had to take a step back. But you know, silly height girl. So, yep. girls. How many have friends? You just yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Okay. If you want to recap the event one more time. Yep. Sure. Uh, Hometown Vintage Christmas is on December 9th from noon to six on First Street, South First Street, if you want to get technical, in Lehigh, uh, just so people are aware, there will be road closures. Uh, the road will be closed from North Street uh, to Iron Street. And then also North Main Lane will be closed, and so will South Street. So, but there'll be plenty of parking um, around, around town. Um, a little bit of walking is good. Yeah, it's a small walk. town. Small, small town. town yeah. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Yeah, it really is. It and it's that hometown feel. Um, support our businesses, um, support our vendors, do some great Christmas shopping. Will the businesses be open the whole time as well? They will be. Right. Yes. All right. Anything else? No, just it's a, it is a really cool event. It is, yeah. It is. So, we were there last year. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing, and a lot of people. I mean, the street was packed, and right. it, it felt really good right. to see the town alive again. It is, yeah. It was a great, it was a great feeling, yeah. and um, you know, the lights going. If we can keep growing this, I think it would be a great event. Yeah, maybe we can incorporate that Christmas parade. Yeah. Well, what is your goal for the event? What do you, where do you see it in the next three years? Oh, who knows? Because you know you have you have your wish list of things you know we would like to see happen. Um, I would love to see, and I think we've talked about this, that we can incorporate even part of the trail involved with it. I mean, we had that problem with the carriage rides. Yeah, you know, have some vendors down along the trail, bringing people up into First Street, and with the way the new um, Sergeant Stanley Cup and Boulevard is being done. There's going to be a lot more crosswalks, things like that, to get people back and forth to both places. Um, it's just kind of be a dream. But we'd really like to have have something like that with different activities and things like that going on. Yeah. More, more activities. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. And uh, good luck on the event. Thanks. Make sure people get out there and check it out. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to a commercial break, and we'll be right back. Thanks, a solid member of the community in the past five years. They take pride in the quality, freshness, and variety of their food. They're known for their warm customer service and friendly staff. Lunch, specials, and fun food. It's Sydney's Deli. Located next to Pfeiffer's Ice Dam in Franklin Township. A wide selection of sandwiches and wraps, which are prepared fresh daily. Sydney's Deli in Franklin Township. 
Cindy's Deli also provides full service catering for corporate functions and other events, and they'll serve each guest during the length of your event. You've got to check out Cindy's Deli as we type everything from lunch to specials to catering and so much more. Cindy's Deli and Franklin Township. Find them online at cindysdeli.com. Make sure to give them a like on Facebook. Look, who doesn't want to be camping? Think about it. Get yourself a nice warm bath. Here's a good one for all these shampoos. Let it blow dry. Don't leave it with the nails. Make sure you're feeling great. And detail. It's got to be cleaners in pocket. For 22 years, Stacy and Jennifer have been very great for pets. So if you're looking for a local vet grooming service and an experienced staff, it's got to be cleaners. Get your best grooming and give them the care they deserve. Here's the cleaners and farmers. Find them online. All right, welcome back to Co-op's Community Podcast. We hope that you and stop down on First Street on December 9th to check out some Heritage Christmas. Sounds like a fun event. It is. It is a fun event, and I can attest to it because I was there last year, and obviously the whole day I was there, and it was, it felt very Christmassy, you know, and very few things anymore to me. It's like Christmas has become so commercialized and whatever, but like the sense of community and the feeling that was downtown last year, like you can't beat it. Right. So um, I, I definitely encourage people to come down town that day, feel it themselves. All right, before we get to our next guest, we do have two events that Colossal Radio is putting on this Christmas. The first one is the Colossal Snowdown. You can guess the day and time of the first inch of snow that will be at the Colossal Radio Station for a chance to win a $150 gift card at Thompson's Meat Market. You can go on to ColossalRadio.rocks to enter your guests, and you have to do it by November 30th is the last day to enter your guests. So if you're the closest time and day to when the first inch of snow will fall at Colossal Radio Studio, you can you can win a chance to win a hundred and fifty dollar gift card. For meat. For meat. I'm a big fan of money <laughs> for meat. Everybody is. Well not unless you're a vegetarian. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but who you can gift it if you don't use it. That's true. All right. Also the second event is the Colossal Christmas Cash. You can listen to win five hundred dollars cash starting December first through December twenty second. There's going to be different time slots that you have to listen on the radio. And when you hear Rudolph Arendo's liners, you can call in. And if you're the lucky caller, you'll be entered in a drawing on December 22nd to win $500 cash. The Doc and Kate will have more information on that on December 1st on their show. So tune in, download the free app, the Colossal Radio app, to listen. And you can win a chance to win $500 cash. Well, and you can spend that $500 on anything, and that's just me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, you could buy $500 in meat, You could buy $500, and if you win the $150, then you can add to it. $650 in meat? <laughs> that's a lot of bacon. That is Get a lot it? of bacon. Yeah, yeah, Get yeah, it? yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, our second guest for this evening is members of the CCTI. They're here to tell us about an awareness project. Welcome. Hi. Do you want to introduce yourselves? And... My name is Haley Keener. I'm Brooke Clear. And I'm Carly Brenda. They're marketing and other investors. So tell us about your awareness project. So we chose to take on a project this year through DECA. Um, DECA is a competition where like, it prepares emerging leaders and entrepreneurs for careers in marketing, uh, financing, and hospitality and management. Uh, so we chose the Community Awareness Project. And basically to do that is we choose or identify a problem around us, maybe in our community, and we create a project on it, you know, step-by-step -step recording what we do to help better that problem or um, situation that we found in our community and um, we chose, uh, we're both from poverty and we've been there whole life so we chose the tea um, drug use 
because we noticed that in the schools and everywhere in town, there's a lot of teams doing the things they shouldn't be doing. And they're all getting, uh, pointing towards bad things in their life. So you chose um, that and we done a bunch of things to kind of, you know, raise attention towards that and get people involved to see how they can help um, not only the problem but with the project as well. Um, and then once we get to the due date of our written event, which is like a binder full of like reports and like, tracking the um, progress of our project, we submit that at a certain date and that's in January. And then um, we have Decca States, which is in Hershey, Pennsylvania in February. And then we present it to the judges there. And it could be like a digital presentation, it could be uh, like a tribal presentation. Okay. So what ex what exactly is your project? Like do you have like an outline of that? Like what are what would people be looking to get involved in? So specifically it would be the TH uh, drug and alcohol use that we found in Pomerden. So we've been to a Chamber of Commerce meeting in Pomerden. We spoke and networked with a bunch of different people from a bunch of different businesses, and they all come from different backgrounds. So we got a lot of info and feedback from them. So Helping us um, would be just helping us get more research, more statistics, um, resources and programs to reach out to. Maybe that can come inform students at our school or uh, certain um, organizations that could come into our town and give the kids something to do, like a program of some sort to distract them from all of that. Okay. So what made you pick the project of drug awareness? Um, we chose drug awareness because we both were raised in Pomerant. Um, and over the years, you can see with our age group, it's, it's getting bad. Um, in the schools, there's always kids getting in trouble uh, for it. You see the town, I know the gazebo in the Pomerant Park was one of the big things that kids kept going into and doing things they shouldn't have been doing. They were destroying it, they were destroying equipment at the park. Um, and a lot of it is the kids that are going back to the bad habits of doing the drugs or drinking because they think it's cool. And I think another thing, because of them doing that, it's just that they're not born and maybe they don't have the community around them or people around them to help steer them away from it. Um, so, if you know, these kids have potential, I mean, we're here doing something about it, they can be here doing something about it. So, just informing them and catching people's attention, raising this issue to people's attention to stop it. And, and being the advisor, this is my second year as the advisor for DECA, and I just love that the organization can provide students this opportunity, this outlet, to help you know, these problems, allow them to figure out solutions to things that affect them you know, in their lives and their day to day. So just something so you know, meaningful to them. As an advisor, it's just a wonderful experience to just be able to you know, watch them grow through this project and things. It's just been, been uh, a neat experience. So ultimately, what what you see coming out of this is like some programs to get those kids involved in other things and give them another outlet besides obviously what they're choosing to do. So ultimately, when all this comes to fruition, like. Like what what ideally would you see come to fruition through what you're trying to accomplish with your awareness? So we know it's never gonna be perfect. It's never gonna definitely stop. We hope for that one day, but we just hope to decrease that percentage of teenage drug use. And we have plans, um, we talked with the Chamber of Commerce, like I said, we plan on furthering um, with the Borough Council possibly. Um, putting a volleyball court, a sand volleyball court in town, or maybe bring back the old arcades in town, you know, give kids something to do. There, there's not too much to do around Pomerant for kids, um, unless it's, it's really outdoor stuff that they have to do. So something like the volleyball court would be fun to get kids, meeting new kids, interacting, getting outside, getting exercise, and being distracted from, you know, the use of drugs and alcohol. And then the arcade not only can benefit those kids, but can benefit the community too. I mean, I love arcades and vintage and stuff like that, so I'd be there too. Maybe you can bring your families out together too. Yep. Because it could be for all ages, really. Right. Yeah. Um, that's cool. You know what I said for years? Like, even when I was in high school, um, 
Now, I was I went to school mainly in Lehigh, and I did do a stint in Pomeranian when I was little. But um, I always said like there should be some place to like who doesn't love school dances, right? Right? Like a place to just like listen to some music and dance or just hang out or whatever, right? And you got to wait for like the one of three or four school dances a year for that to come. Like what if there was like kind of like a weekend nightclub for like teenagers, right? right yeah. To just hang out. So I went to the Roses roller skating rink when I was a kid, mm-hmm. right? And they used to have skate dances. I don't know if they do that anymore. Where like half the time was skating and then like the other half would turn your skates and it was just a DJ. Like you just dance on the floor where you skated, right? That'd be cool too. Because right, you're yeah. right, like there's not a whole lot for like teenagers to do besides if you're not in sports, right? What are you supposed to do with yourself? Play video games, get that. <laughs> you saw $50 play me. Me? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Beef sticks, you know. Yeah. Yeah, good point. So when you're done presenting this, are you gonna oversee this follow through? We'd like to hope so. Um, we're going to stay in touch with the organizations and people we talk to. Um, I'm a senior this year, Brooklyn's a junior, so we're going to try to stay connected after I graduate and keep the project you know, progressing. Um, big shout out to the Palmer Library. They offered an, uh, like a teenage hangout area, kind of similar to what you were talking about. Not as like, you know, big. As, I'd love that. I'd love to be there. Yeah, yeah. Say. right? I wish I could go, but I didn't. Yeah. Do that, but I don't know. <laughs> they have, like, I guess, like in the basement area, they have, like, I guess, a bunch of, like, lounge chairs and, like, couches and stuff like that. And they said kids are welcome to come there and hang out. And, like, they, they said that they'd be up to supplying or helping supply, like, snacks and things like that for kids to go to after school or whatever, just to hang out and decompress and just kind of get away yeah. from what they want to get away from. See what a book looks like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, what is DECA exactly? Because I don't know what that is. So, DECA is Distributive Education Clubs of America, mm-hmm. and um, they it's it's more knowledge based. Um, if you're in the skills USA, um, it's more of a hands on um, type of competition. Um, where DECA, it's preparing you for real life jobs and real life situations in your career that you could be uh, furthering up in um, and it puts you in real life situations or projects or things like that that you may have to do eventually in the future. So this kind of gives you the practice for that and you get to compete and win, which is fun. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what do you win if you win? Yeah. <laughs> so the ultimate, the ultimate award. Um, almost you got to go to nationals last year. Um, so they have the district level, the state level, and then the national level. And this year nationals is in uh, Anaheim, California. So students progress through the competitions they can make their way there. And then the ultimate prize is what they call deca glass. It's in a trophy that's made of glass. Oh. Um, but aside from that, the students, uh, what I see as the advisor, the experience, the energy that's there. Um, the students get to experience networking with other peers with liked interests, you know, similar interests, and professionals in the um, industry they can talk to the judges and the um, people that have um, uh, like tables for display and things that can go around and talk and network and, and just grow their conversations and things and just the speaking skills and soft skills they call, you know, that they get to learn is just, is just awesome. So I think that in itself is an awesome award. Yeah, the best thing. Yeah, I think the experience is like the best thing. Even it's at so states, fun. states is fun. Uh, we're all at the Hershey Lodge mm-hmm. together, um, and I like the the opening ceremony because we're all like super hyper then, <laughs> and we're all just ready right there to like have a good time. But you do meet a lot of people doing stuff like this. States is fun because they have, I mean, I've never been to nationals, so I can't speak to nationals, but States is just, it's, it's a fun, upbeat environment, you know, everybody's buzzing around Hershey Lodge and wanting to meet new people and excited for competition, and so they have opening ceremony, they'll have a dance, they have like modeling shows where people can compete in modeling, so they'll have a modeling show, they do lunches and things like that, um, they have the water park there, uh, and then I know 
closing ceremony, they give us these really cool, like, glow sticks and stuff, and it's, like, really cool to see all the nice awards put up. <laughs> they had an upcoming rapper there last mm -hmm. year, and yep. he, was, he did his thing, and everybody was so loud and hyped for it. It was so cool. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. So, what is, what is your timeline for all of this? Um, we started at, like, well, Haley and I chose this project when it was still in the summer. Yeah, we were, we were thinking. We already, we yeah. knew we wanted to do a team thing together, so we chose that we wanted to do this in the summertime. Um, started around the beginning of the school year. Uh, I would say, like, this month and last month are when we really got things together and started going out and uh, going to meetings and seeing people. I know we talked to Doyle Halfway, he was our first person. Uh, we talked to Dr. Frank Kelly from Harvard Mary High School. Um, so we did that really in like October and November. And then uh, I would say we're doing more of that and then trying to get um, a lot of stuff for our, our written event, which is uh, due in January. Yeah, so we spoke to Doyle Hefley to kind of get his perspective on it because he sees all of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So he talked about how he was in a type of organization that focuses on the drug and alcohol use. Um, so we actually just had a bake sale at Country Harvest this past month and we raised about $200 for it. So um, we are going to donate that money to Doyle to put into that organization mm -hmm. to go, you know, further go research and things like that. And you go to CCTI, what are you going for up there? We're both in marketing. Okay. Yep. Is that what you plan on doing after high school? Yeah, I plan on doing digital marketing, so lots of social media and things like that. I plan on doing sports management. Yeah. Please. Another dress. They're dressed so sharp. Know, we look like sharp. Well, I know. <laughs> they should be sitting here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually the apparel for DECA, so like, that's a going to competition, you have a like certain um, attire, they have like guidelines on their website and things like that. Um, districts, it's more lenient, it's more like blazer, pants, a little nice shirt even. Yeah. Um, states, it gets a little more stricter with, uh, they have deco blazers, um, colors even sometimes. Um, I feel like schools you say is kind of stricter with that, but deco, it teaches you how to be professional, not only in the competition part of it, but the you know dressing professional part of it. Present yourself. What's your favorite part about being in the group? I would say everybody is just so like supportive, and you know if you did something really good with whatever you're working on, whether it's just a marketing class or in Deca. You know, everybody's there to tell you you did a really good job, and they'll share what you did. If it's like something like social media, which I do at the school, they'll share the post, or they'll tell me I did a really good job. Um, even like competitions, when somebody wins, like everybody's so loud. We're so loud. Even though we're a smaller group, we're loud. <laughs> we are loud, and we like to embarrass everybody in that way, I guess. Like, Make them blush. It's like a family wall, just scream each other's name. It's like you want a sporting mm -hmm. event or something. Yeah. You're, you're there. <laughs> Super Bowl. Yeah, you're there, and you, you know, someone from your school wins, and everyone just starts screaming their name. Mm -hmm. Stand out amongst the larger schools that are there. So yeah, the students yeah. are excellent with that. Yeah. That's awesome. Were you ever involved in anything like that in school? No, I was not. Yeah, me either. <laughs> no. No. Mm. Just a band geek. <laughs> Hey, I love band. Right? I love band. Right? That's what I'm saying. That is it makes it out to me. <laughs> so, since you're a senior, what are your plans after? So, I plan on attending LTRC for two years, just to kind of get the basic academic stuff out of the way. And then, um, Kutztown University is the goal for digital marketing. I was browsing websites and I found theirs and I saw their digital marketing program and I had, like fell in love. Right. So that's like the dead set goal. Right. So digital marketing, like you said social media, right? Mm -hmm. So when they're like targeting me because I just said <laughs> the word like, <laughs> I don't know, what's something like that? Actually, actually it was those breathe right strips because, meat, because I snore meat. Meat, right? I said meat. So all of a sudden I'm going to get all kinds of advertising yeah. stuff. Yeah. That might be me. Yeah, it's going to be you. Yeah. All right. 
<laughs> it's like a face. It's, it's, yeah. it's not a bot. Yeah. It's, not it's not me. Not me. <laughs> yeah. And obviously you said you're doing sport. Sports management. Sports management. Do you like any kind of sport? Or? Yeah, I've always just been into all sports. Right. The league. Yeah. Wrestling, NFL, NHL. I've always been a sports fan. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. And you, is your goal any team in particular or like area? Like, are you a Philly fan? Um, no. I'm actually a Cowboys fan. Um, oh, so well, if, well, I was doing a team, <laughs> if I was doing a team, I would either go for them. Or uh, hockey-wise, I would go for the Jersey Devils. Well, we're going to have to agree disagree on this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this interview is over. Yeah, get out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so as an advisor, what, what do you think of their project? Like, when they came to you about this, what were your thoughts? Um, they were very ambitious, so they definitely were reaching for the stars. So I said, okay, let's take those stars and let's try to bring it down so that we can make this something doable, but, then, but also something that we could lead us to those stars, you know? Because ultimately, their their dream is to have that arcade or that volleyball park or something, mm-hmm. some place or that dance place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so something cool. And they said, um, sometimes those things can take a while, and that's fine. But how? What, where, where can we start? You know, in our project management to kind of to pave the way for there. So um, it's been really awesome kind of seeing them reach out to professionals such as Doyle Hefley and, and the superintendent. They did that all on their own. They made their uh, professional emails, reached out professionally, uh, have professional Zoom meeting and everything. Yeah. You know, got to pre- uh, present professionally at the chamber uh, luncheon, uh, things like that. So just watching them grow professionally in that sense um, has just been awesome to kind of see. So as an advisor, it's just wonderful to see them make these connections that I'm hoping will continue way past graduation, okay. beyond high school, yeah. you know, so. So what, what are the feelings that you have, or even like feedback that you've gotten, maybe you haven't gotten any yet, about kind of addressing mm-hmm. something with your peers, right? Because I feel, I feel like that would be intimidating me to go to people that, you know, not necessarily your friends, I maybe mean, they're your friends, I don't know, but like people that, that are your peers and say like, I know what you do. Mm-hmm. Like you shouldn't do this. Like, <laughs> it, yeah. like, has that been an issue, or how do you feel about that? I feel like we really haven't addressed our peers' peers yet. I mean, like our classmates kind of know about it, and um, our friends outside of CCTI, some of our friends outside of CCTI know about it, um, and they seem to be up for it. But I don't think they're doing it. That's probably why they're up for it. Right. Um, I hope they're not doing. it. <laughs> but, um, I think, you know, growing up around the peers I have, a lot of them do vape, unfortunately. So they're probably like, oh, yeah, yeah, another presentation, or yeah. someone else trying to preach to me that this isn't good, but it's better than this, you know? So I feel like the, the teens are age always have excuses, no matter what it comes to, <laughs> whether it's chores or, you know, <laughs> saying no to drugs or mom told you to do something, but you this, you know? But, um, so it's easy for them to say, oh, it's better, well, it's better than cigarettes or whatever, but it's all bad for you in the end. Like, just don't do it. Right, don't right. do it. But that's something we definitely want to do at some point in the future is address our peers. Yeah. Well, it's just a little bravery. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I, mean, to, yeah. I mean, to talk to people that you see every day or, mm-hmm. you know, and put that out on the table, you mm-hmm. know, like the elephant in the room, like address it. So I think that takes a lot of guts. So kudos to you. Yeah. You know, it's easy to tell someone you don't have to see every day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, you know, when you have to go to school with them or see them around town or whatever, or like, and let's just face it, if you grow up in Lehigh, or Palmer or even Lehigh, like, you may not be friends with them, but you know them, right? Yeah. Or you know somebody who knows them. them or mm-hmm. you have to, Everybody knows everyone. Right. <laughs> and we're down the line. People know so, people. yeah. So that's what, that's what I mean. Like, I'm sure to some degree it could be a, maybe a little nerve-wracking initially to stand up to, to your peers a little bit. So, Especially if you've known them since like elementary school and like you've known that they've been doing it since elementary school. Right. And it's hard to break that habit too. So Right. 
So what is your kind of hobbies you have outside of school? Um, so I'm one of the cheer captains for Palmetto Cheerleading. Um, I'm in the high school chorus. I do the drama club spring shows. <coughs> and then at CCTI, I do uh, DECA, Skills USA, Student Council, Yearbook Club. I'm in Boston. Social media. Yeah. <laughs> All the social media at our school, I usually am the one doing it. Uh, I do concert band for Palmerton, and I do stage crew for the fall and spring shows. And then up at Tech, I do DECA and Interact Rotary Club. It's a lot of stuff. It is. <laughs> well, they're busy. They are very busy. <laughs> yeah. But nobody said volleyball. I was waiting to say about the volleyball club. Or video games. I yeah. Thought, yeah, right. I thought for sure someone was going to be like, well, you know, I'm on the volleyball team and I play a lot of the pinball. It's popular. Volleyball <laughs> <Yes. laughs> is very popular in my family, so yeah. my family will probably be the ones out there. The big adults will be out there playing the volleyball, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I played in high school, so yeah. So if there's a kid out there that wants to get involved in DECO, what is your advice? Just, you know, take the chance. You know, if you're nervous, then that means you need to jump in. Like, just do it because it improved my like speaking skills and confidence, self confidence skills because I've struggled with that most of my life. So, getting into something like this where you're always talking and you're always meeting new people, it was definitely scary. I was a little nervous, but I had advisors and friends that kind of helped me through it, and I have no regrets on joining DECA. I recommend it to anybody. I would definitely say it helps with talking. Because I know me personally, I'm a person that doesn't really talk to a lot of people. So I think just always now needing to be out and talking to people. And even in school, I have so many people now that I have to talk to every day. <laughs> so I think it definitely helped with talking and just being social. Yeah. Now you do DECA through CCTI, right? Right. Is DECA available in all schools or is it a CT CCTI thing? Um, I'm not. I'm not sure of all the other county schools and they have them, but it would be any high school that wants to open up a chapter. Okay. So they would go through the organization and uh, you know, begin a chapter uh, and provide it. So it's high school and college level. So it's always offered at both. So it's really any school interested in wanting to, they can go to deca.org and uh, take a look and find, you know, if they're interested in starting a chapter. Uh, I started teaching at CCTI last year, uh, took over as advisor for DECO, and um, there's been a nice long history of the chapter at CCTI for many years, uh, with two you know, previous instructors who did a wonderful job advising and you know, getting the chapter to where it is today, so I'm fortunate to kind of take over and continue that. Mm -hmm. All right, cool beans. All right, we're going to go to a commercial break and we'll be right back. So maybe you have an event coming up. Maybe you want to take that event to a whole new level with the best production team in the industry, Mystic Mountaintop Production Team. Mystic Mountaintop Productions. They're doing what they do since 1986, right? And they can hook you up with the latest pro lighting, sound, and stages, and video walls. This team has been doing it for decades, from Music Fest in the Lehigh Valley to all over the world. And not only are they friends of mine, but they're local and based out of Kresgeville, Pennsylvania. Now they just love what they do. And they can work with almost any budget to take your next event into the Mystic with the best in lighting, sound production, stages, and video walls. Find out more about this production team at mysticmountaintop.com. Free checking does exist, and you can find that and more at MCT. Switch to the local one to trust. MCT offers convenient and connected banking solutions like free checking and debit card, plus our top-rated mobile banking app. Visit mct.bank slash chucky to get started. Mod Chuck Trust Company. Neighbors you know, bankers you trust. All right, welcome back to Gloss Community Podcast. Lee and I are here learning about DECA and the CCTI awareness project. What do you think, Leanne? Um, I think we can do drugs where watch out. 
<laughs> They're coming for you. They're coming. They're coming. Should be our motto. Just look in. Better watch out. All right, we have two comments here. We have, hey, it's so much fun. You go, girls, and then you guys are doing great. Thank you. I don't know if you know these people. Yeah. Jalen Burns and Emma. Oh, I love Jalen Burns. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, if you just want to recap again what your awareness project is. So we just take on the Community Awareness Project through DECA this year. Um, we have to identify or choose some sort of problem in our community or surrounding us in some way um, and sort of address it through our project. So we have a written event, which is like a binder full of progress and steps we've taken through our project, people we've spoken to, organizations we've gotten in touch with, etc. Um, and then we submit that part in January and we just keep working on our project within the presentation part of it, which is at States, since it's a straight to States event. Um, we present our project at States with a trifold, or it could be a digital presentation, something like that. Okay. Yeah, stay tuned for the arcade. Yep. <laughs> and the dances. And the dances. <laughs> and the volleyball games. And the volleyball and games. Volleyball. Yes. It's all coming together. Yeah, I'm not teetering anymore. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have a couple more events to talk about. Leanne, do you want to talk about the little poster here? Sure. So, I can't say that word, though. Can you say that word? Is it Krampus? Krampus? Well, the whole, uh, whatever. The Black Forest. Listen, uh, it's German. It's yes, German. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, they actually, um, this event was taken over by a different group this year. Um, but it is the... Krampus Festival that's been held yearly. Um, last year it was up at, well, previously it was in Jim Thorpe, then it went to Pocono Whitewater, and now it's here at the Hopper Mill this year. It's kind of ducking around a little bit. I think it found its new home though. I think, we're, I think it's settled here. Yeah. Um, but it's a pretty cool festival, December 2nd, um, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, come in your best Krampus costume. Um, a lot of cool vendors that are going to be there that are obviously to theme. Um, so if you're into the German folklore of Krampus, you know, uh, yep. Yep. better. The pre-party is Friday, December 1st from 5 to 10 p.m. You know, live music, vendors, different performances. By Krampus sideshow performances. So, sideshow. Sideshow. Are they gonna do gross things? They're gonna do gross I things, mean, aren't they? Guess you have to come and find out. I don't. I don't like <laughs> shows of gross things. <laughs> Listen, I saw some weird freak show at the Bloomsburg Fair, and he like swallowed a balloon. Where did the balloon go? It was like a really long balloon, and he's swallowing it, and I almost vomited all over the people around me because it, I can't watch that kind of stuff. There's another guy that like put a nail in his eye. No, sorry, no, can't. My mom was saying there like this is the coolest thing ever, and I'm like, I need to leave. I left. I walked out. So your mom thought it was cool. Just weird. <laughs> all right, it's Saturday, December second. Palmerton Burrell will have their tree lighting ceremony held in Palmerton Park. There's going to be different vendors and all sorts of events happening. Starts at noon and goes all the way up to 4.45 p.m. when the tree lighting ceremony is. And then December 3rd, uh, Lehigh will have their tree lighting ceremony at, at 6 p.m. And then December 9th, Perryville will have their tree lighting ceremony at the Perryville Volunteer Fire Company. Santa and Mrs. Claus will arrive via fire truck at 5.30 p.m. So there's lots of Christmas events happening in the area. Yeah. And of course, we just learned the first half hour with uh, Vintage Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. And uh, with Christmas coming, what's your favorite part about Christmas? Um, I know this sounds like the most cliche answer, but family. Love family, love being around family, and then I love the Christmas movies, like the cringy romance ones. Oh, you're a Hallmarker. Uh, I don't know, not so much Hallmark, maybe a little bit. Yeah, little bit. Okay. like the Grinch, the Jim Grinch. Carrey Grinch. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the only one. <laughs> yeah, that's what I say. Everybody says the cartoon, and I'm like, yeah. 
Uh, I like the movies, and I like building gingerbread homes. Well, I won't eat them, but I'll build them. Okay. okay. And what's your favorite part? Um, I think all the decorations and just that feeling, the overall feeling of the, of the season, mm -hmm. along with family. What's your favorite part, Keith? Presents. I knew you were <laughs> Wait, getting them or giving them? Getting them. Yeah, I'm getting them. Why oh, right. give them? Keep them for yourself. <laughs> what's your favorite part? Uh, the ham, the food. So food. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I love ham. It's my favorite. It gives me the meat sweats. So I'll get you a canned ham for Christmas. I don't want candy. What do I look like to you? I get a snow can for my dinner. Cool. It is cool. It's good. Mm -hmm. And you know, I put it in a roaster and I put some. Put some pineapple juice and uh, apple cider in the bottom, so then when it steams up, that gets into the ham. No. Yeah. All right. Also, we have a Christmas light tour map. If you want your house uh, showcased on the Christmas light tour map, you can email your address to us at colossalcommunitypodcast at gmail dot com, and we'll add you to the tour map. And you can go all around Carbon County and Poconos to check out the house is decorated. Uh, so we can email to that. And we are doing the Christmas song bracket contest. Well, not contest, but survey where every day I am posting two Christmas songs on our Facebook page. And you can vote for your favorite song. And we'll go to this, we'll do 16 songs and then vote the number one song of the year. So it's our third year doing that as well. So that's all coming up in the course of Colossal Radio contest the colossal snowdown or if you guess the day and time of the first inch of snow at the colossal radio studio you can win a chance to have a 150 dollar gift card to thompson's meat market and starting december 1st you can start listening to colossal radio for the christmas colossal christmas cash where you can listen to win 500 dollars in cash for more meat for more meat more ham more ham when you were recently on a trip to Egypt, to yeah. Wanna, Guess what they don't about? have there? What? Ham. They don't have ham. They don't eat pork over there. Wow. I know. I came home and ate a lot of bacon. Yeah, it was it was an incredible trip to be over in Egypt and Jordan. Um, I'm, two weeks is a long time to be away from home, uh, but there we saw some incredible things, once in a lifetime things. Um, I almost brought home about 100 dogs that were stray and about 50 cats that were stray and uh, all the horses and all the donkeys. And, but I didn't because they didn't fit my bag. No. But um, definitely a once in a lifetime trip. Um, you, can't, you can't beat standing in front of those things that were made so long ago, you, I don't know, because it makes you look at like the, the fact that today we build things and they don't last. Right. And you're like, really? Because they build all this. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like this. yeah. Right? So um, it, it's incredible and it's huge. And I know I'm short, but like you just stand in front of these things and you, you just can't do that. Now, is it true? I heard this from different people. They said that over in Egypt where the pyramids are, that on all the brochures they show you the pyramid, but actually behind you is a McDonald's. Is that true? It is. It is a stone's throw away from the city. That is pretty true. But to counter that, when you're there in front of them, you really don't see it. Now, if you're in the city, it's a different story because you're right there. But I mean, yes, it's technically not wrong. Huh. Yeah. But you didn't go to McDonald's. Then. No, but I wanted to. I would have killed for a trip to McDonald's. You don't even know. <laughs> what was your favorite food that you had over there? I didn't have any favorite food there. It was terrible. No. I, all the food there was terrible. I can't eat that food. Thanks. And I pooped a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of food. Because my stomach did not like any of the food that I ate. Wow. Yeah. And I don't really care if I say that because, you know. Okay. Just a you know, warning. If you go there, you're going to poop a lot. And, <laughs> <laughs> Remember that if you want to go to Egypt. You go to Egypt. Take a modium. All right. All right. Sounds like fun.
and your pictures were great. Yeah. All right, that's going to do it for tonight. Our next episode and our last episode for the year is December 11th. Leanne and I will brainstorm some ideas and maybe we'll do some like Christmas games and invite some of our past guests or something. Yeah, dress up maybe. Dress up, yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. All right thank you guys for coming. Good luck on your project. Yeah, Good luck at DECA and hope you go to states and nationals and all that. Thank you for coming and uh, we'll see you all next time.